and then the following day, uh, we went to a few sessions. I'm like, all right, this is, this is kind of cool. And then we heard that there was going to be an interactive session. I believe it was around 3.30 or so, with some guys hosting a wrestling mayhem show. And I had told them, I'm like, all right, this, this will be a, this has got to be something cool. So we go in there, we get front row seats. It's getting ready to start. We're the only people in there. I'm, I'm getting worried. I'm like, are we even in the right room? And then people just filled in. So we listen to them talk about how they interact with their fans, and we start taking mental notes. I'm like, oh, they have great ideas. You know, let's invite people to be more interactive, not just say, well, send us an email. They're, they're yeah, come on, y'all, be a part of our community. So we got pretty excited about that. And just before the session ended, one of them picked up a chair and hit the other one overhead. So it was a great finale. We figured, all right, these are some pretty cool guys that we could hang out with, wrestlers and uh, beer guys. Because wrestling is all about fan interaction, and so is our show. Mm -hmm. So I decided to add a little bit of fan interaction to our panel. And basically what, what it was, was anytime they, uh, whenever you're at a wrestling show, anybody throws a chop, everybody woos, like Ric Flair, like, woo, you know? And, uh, oh, like that. Oh, there it is. You know? <laughs> yes, we did. We did do a session with the wrestling guys. It was interesting. Yeah. It's <laughs> educational, inspirational, very painful. <laughs> I got hit. Right about there. <laughs> quite, a, quite a few times. But the initial plan was the wrestling guys were going to talk, we were going to talk, and it was going to be on grassroots podcasting because uh, we don't have the money. It comes out of our paychecks, basically, and I and when I, I begged my wife for a couple extra dollars to buy a microphone or you know a spit guard or something. So we were talking about it, and grassroots podcasting would be the best way to get more people involved. That were they didn't want to put a lot of money into it to be involved with podcasting at first. They didn't want to make an investment and then find out it, it was a bust. And that's where we came in. It's, we were telling people you don't have to spend a ton of cash. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars. So the wrestling guys have this thing where when someone shouts out the Ric Flair woo, which I'm not going to do because he's going to hit me, I will. Uh, you get chopped, which is basically me. the hand across the chest. Well, unfortunately, there was quite a few of those, and I was right in the middle of everyone. <laughs> so I got it two or three times as hard. By the end of the show... I don't even know who brought up this idea, but uh, they decided that Father Spoon should get chopped by DJ Lunchbox. We're told that they were people were looking forward to our session. Yeah, yeah, just for woos. We, we, we damaged um, the. Should I drink that Father Spoon tea? Exactly. We damaged him. We yes. damaged him. Yes. Because we included them on the fun mm -hmm. in our session. And let me tell you, it, it left a handprint on my chest because <laughs> he happened to get me like right about there. So there's a handprint on my chest for the next two days. And even at the after parties, it was stinging. And people were like, can we see that? And I'm like, look. And you could just see this big red handprint right there on my chest. I'm like a paintball. So we do provide entertainment. Oh, no. It's all in good fun amongst us podcasters. So. Pod Camp 3 is not a violent event. Now, we can't say all the sessions will be non-violent. <laughs> But just know ahead of time, though. I'm sure the Wrestling Mayhem guys won't randomly hit strangers in the hallways. So. But they will hit us. Yeah, they will. 